I've been bending some metal lately in my projects and I thought that the progression of tools and methods and things that I've gone through would be, would be fun to share. So I started off trying to bend flat stock, little pieces like this, and moved on to tubing. And with flat stock, you know, you feel like you can get away potentially with doing it freehand on an edge, some things like that. Although that pretty immediately becomes not a great option. So I decided to go old school. And when I say old school, I mean it very literally. This is uh, anvil, full size, solid iron. This is an attachment which goes on the top. It plugs into the square thing and allows you to bend stuff over the top. It gives you even more options than just the horn, I think is what it's called. So you put it on here and then you hammer on it. But again, this is much better than just the edge. But the problem with this is that it's tapered, obviously. And that means that your piece ends up following that taper also and doesn't get a straight bend. This next step is pretty simple. You produce a shape of what you want it to bend around and then you pull the piece around it. But rather than trying to just do it like that, which does give you some success, what you do is you have a piece like this. So we have our flat stock here. We, and then we have this piece here. And what this does is allow a shaft. I didn't secure this, it should be shifted up more. So I'm just gonna cheat it by hand a little bit. So we get that shaft on there, okay? So it's secured at the bottom, the shaft is on there, and then we take this and we just pull it around. It's gonna spring back a bit, but that leaves us with our piece and it has a nice bend on there. The nice thing about this going all the way past it too is that it goes almost all the way to the end. There's very little waste. And this one isn't very wide, it's just what I had on hand, but this was originally for inch and a half material. So you get pieces like this, and it's pretty neat. If you need to go past 90, you can, you can run it past there. So this is uh, pretty handy. I also, the reason why it comes apart up here is so that I could have different size shapes. This is a smaller one that I made but never used. The problem with this, of course, is that it's not adjustable. You've got to hit your diameter that you make it pretty well right on. I've done this a couple different times with aluminum and then conduit also and I've settled on a little over 10% as being the spring back factor that I want to use. 10% isn't quite enough, so maybe, maybe 12%. So if you wanted something that had a 24 inch diameter, you want your shape to be about 10% less than that. So that would be 21.6, round down a little bit, maybe make it 21 and a half inches in diameter. And that's gotten me much closer to, to what I'm aiming for. So that's the number that I would start with make your own adjustments depending on the material. In addition to pulling it over a shape like that, you can pull it over a shape like this. This was for three quarter conduit. And this works pretty well. It's not restricted this way. The piece could slip off, but you have enough control. And for something like conduit, which is easy enough to bend, it's, it's very manageable. You can also go past uh, 180 degrees, but it gets a little tricky depending on the table that it's sitting on. So what we really want to do is go to a three-wheel solution. The three-wheel thing is pretty straightforward. You start off like this. This would be flat. And if we push this one this way, it'll force it to be like that. And then if you crank it, around, you'll create a radius. This is the frame that I came up with. So we have our pins for the wheels. The holes aren't drilled in the center. Things do not have to be, do not have to be very precise to get it to work well at all, which is kind of the point that I want to make. You see some of these uh, ones that you can buy and they have laser cut holes punched out and it doesn't need to be that pretty if you're doing some, some softer things like conduit or, or an aluminum tube. The washers that go on top of this are artisanal handcrafted washers with the angle grinder, very, very precision. And then we match that with grade eight bolts, of course, because only the best for my workshop. And then you need a way to adjust this. Obviously having these two with just the pins here is, is pretty simple. I just hole sawed them through with a carbide tooth hole saw, welded those on there. So the way that I made it adjustable was I took my pin again, welded a nut on the end. I had this bolt laying around, which matched the nut. 
Then I took a die and forced the threads up further, angle grindered a hole that was relatively close to this in both this wall and this one so that it slides back and forth. Tacked this on here because you have to pull on the nut from further back. Tack some washers on there and it pulls it in. We don't have to worry about it going like that too much. So we have just some little PVC pipe washers to keep these up off of here. I almost forgot to mention that these wheels are just pieces of three quarter plywood with quarter on each side. I'm using conduit also, not because it's strong at all, but because it's weak and it's designed to be bent. So it allows me to experiment very quickly with things. Soft enough to bend easily, but strong enough to be useful enough for some testing. Now the funny thing about this, as you can see my assistant switching sides, is that if you don't support the ends, it'll start to droop. And it'll droop a little further each time and you'll actually end up with a helix, which is not very helpful. And the problem with putting like a piece out here, a roller stand or something, to support it is that your, your piece gets a tighter and tighter radius every time. So you'll have it here and then the next time it's over there and then it, and then it falls off. So it really just works better to have a person there. I was just about to make a comment about how the crunching sound that you were hearing was the center of the thing crushing just a little bit, which helps accommodate the pipe, and I guess that is true, but it also squeezed this until it popped right off. So this was just cheap uh, veneer plywood from the orange store, so I need to upgrade to some Baltic birch, obviously. So that's as far as we got on this one for now. But as you can see, it's on its way to a much smaller diameter. And I promise also that all of these seemingly disconnected projects are gonna tie back together pretty soon, probably in two or three weeks, and it will all make sense. That's it for now. Thank you for watching.